Hi, it's Jane, and uh, I'm coming to you with a full confession here. I realized when I was um, doing this shawl, you know, the Tunisian shawl along, the 2007 that Arnie Grabowski had put out there, and the pattern is up and um, still on her website in the way back machine. Um, but I got to looking at this and I thought, you know, the shape of this has changed a little bit and I don't like it. And I thought it was because of the knit pearl rose. When I got to looking at it, I realized that I have on these center stitches changed the way I was doing the center stitches. So in that change, it changed the shape of the shawl and the way that it was going. So, I'm going to rip it back, and I'm going to show you how to pick up some stitches using a lifeline in Tunisian knit, <coughs> I mean in Tunisian crochet. So we're going to put a lifeline back here where this um, simple stitch is, and then I will proceed correctly with the pattern and I'll show you how to add a lifeline. Now for the lifeline, the um, if you have one of these swivel hooks, most of you where you have the join there is a hole here that you actually put the key in to help tighten. That is where you're going to use um, use it to your benefit. Okay, um, and I will show you how we do that. You can do that with crochet thread, um, and that's what I'm going to do is with a size 10 crochet thread to add a lifeline. But um, first off, I'm going to show you how to do it with a simple needle, um, you know, like a darning needle, something like that. All right, guys, let's get over to the table and let's fix this boo boo. See you guys there. Okay, folks, we're at the table and I am going to start picking up these stitches. And I'm going to pick up the um, simple stitches so that I can rip back to that simple stitch row. And that's going to start right in here. The problem is going to be when we get up here to this Tunisian extended stitch is to pick up the right stitch. Um, but it's just, it's a lot of, it's a lot like knitting um, when you add pick up stitches for um, knitting. Now, I am using crochet thread. So I've pulled off a nice big long length of it. And we're going to start picking up those stitches. Okay. So we know that we need this stitch. We're going to need this one this, this. Because it's Tunisian Simple, it's fairly easy to pick up those stitches. Um, it's when you get into the knit and the purl, it, it gets a little difficult to pick up stitches. And then you're just going to pull that uh, thread through there. And we're just going to continue to pick up the stitches like this. And ideally, you don't want to split your yarn, although sometimes it happens, and you just want to pull that cord with you as long as you go. You could use yarn if you wanted to. Um, I just thought because I had this sitting right there, it would be easier to use it. Okay, now we're coming up to the center stitch here. We want to look real carefully we do see that stitch there. That is our full stitch. That is our yarn over. And then this is our extended stitch. And then we'll once again start picking up on the other side, which that's the yarn over. That is the full stitch. And we'll just continue to pick those up as we go. I think you can see where if you were doing a um, 
If you're picking up the stitches in the knit, it would be easy because you can see there is your knit, just like your Tunisian simple stitch. You know, it's going to be easier to pick up as you go. Pearls are difficult to pick up because you really have to look at the stitch. Here is the pearl. When we would do the pearl, we would just pick up one leg. And normally that would be this leg here. But since we're going back to the Tunisian simple stitch row, that makes it an easier system for picking up those stitches. Coming up to these last stitches here. That's the last stitch there. That is the full stitch. And then here is the final stitch where we went through. Generally, I just pick up one leg of it. Just simple. I do leave a long cord. You know, I've got a big long cord. You know my love of pony beads. So generally, I will just add a couple of pony beads on one end. Tie a couple of knots so they don't come undone. Usually I do three. And they're easy to undo, you know, normally you would need a needle. And then I'll come back over here to the other side where I had added that. And I'll simply cut off that end. I need to get my scissors. Cut off that end. Add one or two pony beads, doesn't really matter. And then tie off on the end a couple times. Because I don't want that coming undone. Okay. And that is how you would do it if you were using a needle to pick up those stitches. Okay. Then it's just as simple as starting the unraveling, undoing the uh, stitches. And what I had realized I was doing is when I got to this center stitch, I was actually doing, instead of an extended stitch, I was changing that stitch all the way up. Um, I was doing the extended stitch and then pulling through the, the uh, yarn over. And that's what caused a lot of those issues. So I'm going to go off camera and I am going to rip this out. And then we will get back to getting it back in order. And I will show you again how to add a lifeline to your hook. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. Now that I have it pulled back to where my lifeline is, I'm actually going to pick those stitches up because I do want to finish those stitches. And it's just as simple picking up the stitches with your hook, just like that, all the way across. And then, we'll, then I will do the return pass on this and then we will start with section two. Now that I've picked up my stitches here, I'm actually going to remove my lifeline. And I simply cut off those beads on 
one end here. And then this end here. You just simply pull your lifeline through and out. And then I'm going to use this, this again and show you how to put in a lifeline with that next row. But I am going to finish my um, row here and then we will start with section two. Okay, I'm back and we're ready to start with section two. Now, I'm going to reuse my cord here. So I'm going to thread it through one of these holes that is here. Um, it's kind of difficult to see. That was good. Knock that right out of there, Jane. But you have two holes and you use either one to tighten here. But I'm actually just going to take my cord and run it through there, through one of those holes. And sometimes it can be a little difficult to get it through there. If you need to, you can actually use a sewing needle to get it through there. I may need to go get a sewing needle. All right, guys, be back in just a second. Okay. Now we're ready to add our lifeline. And the lifeline, if you have a um, needle threader, you can actually run your needle threader through that hole there to place your thread, your cord. I do not, so what I have done is simply taken a piece of thread, doubled it up, and run it through. Hope you can see that. So that I have a loop here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my size 10 thread through there. Create a nice little loop and then I am going to go into that hole, take my needle through the hole and pull my cord through. And I am going to leave a nice long tail and then I'll just simply take that out of that thread that I had there. And then we're ready to start section two. All right, section two starts the um, row, it's a row A and row B. Row A is a Tunisian pearl row. Row B is Tunisian knit. And um, then you will repeat those rows A, then B, A, then B for a total of eight rows or however many you choose to do. So it starts with the Tunisian simple stitch, then a full stitch. And then we begin our purling. So we're going to purl all the way up to the tip. <sighs> so I want to apologize for making that mistake, but I'm human. And remember, I am not an expert. I just play one on YouTube. But yeah, you know, and maybe um, by making the mistake, it'll help you so that you too can avoid making that mistake. Like I said, what I realized that I was doing is when I got to that extended knit stitch, I was taking it through the um, yarn over, and that's why I had so many issues with that on the point. And you don't want to do that, so... We're going to avoid that from now on. 
And I don't know why I realized all of a sudden that I had done that. You know, maybe it was I just sat, looked at it, and realized that those were, those, that extended stitch was bowing over too far. <clears throat> Sorry about that, folks. First thing in the morning, allergies. That nasal drainage is a pain. But anyway, it was a good experience to show you how to put in a lifeline. Um, and sometimes you have to rip things out. All right, we've got up to the center point. And now this is our yarn over, so we will do a full stitch there. Then yarn over, then do a extended knit stitch, which is go through that as knit wise, pull up a loop, and go through that chain. Then we'll yarn over our next loop. Our next stitch here is that full stitch, so we'll do that, and then we will start purling on the other side. So I'm going to do this with you. As the shawl gets bigger, um, I will start the process with you and meet you up at the center point. But for these first two rows, I'll just go ahead and do them. And like I said, these this is section two, and then she calls it horizontal stripes. And I still think even with um, correcting my boo-boo there that we're going to see some curling, but maybe not. Maybe that's what caused a lot of those issues for me. Who knows? It's anybody's guess, right? Biggest thing is to remember with this shawl is to do those increases on each end and to remember to do the full stitch and then your um, yarn overs before you do your extended knit stitch in the center. And the extended knit stitch is designed um, simply because if you just did a knit stitch there, it would not be tall enough to create the point. And you do want a little bit of a point with this shawl. <coughs> We've gotten to this last, oops, I don't know why I did a purl stitch, I mean a simple stitch. And then we will do a full stitch here. And then pick up the last two like normal. Chain one, and your return pass is chain one. Yarn over, pull through two, all the way back to the beginning. And I'm going to do that with you. Maybe it will avoid some mistakes further on, you know? Oops. Remember to go through the two. And you hear in that cord hit against the um, board that I use to film tutorials. I'm going to call those tutorials loosely. And I don't know, um, I do find Tunisian crochet um, almost therapeutic um, because that return pass it just 
it feels nice when you're doing one, especially if it's just the simple return pass, your normal return pass. When you have to do those countings as you do with that lacy star stitch, then it gets a little odd, you know? And I didn't, I didn't take my cord all the way through the stitches for a lifeline, which I should have shown you how to do that. All right, let me get some more yarn here. All right. Now the second row, row B, is the knit row. And you see you've got a little bit of a dividing line there. And you'll find when she has you do these sections in between, she does have you do a purl row in between to define the sections. Um, so, let's start on that row B. Row B is our knit stitch row. And of course, we still start with a simple stitch. Then we do our full stitch here. That's our increase. Then we begin the simple stitch, which is simply going through the stitch front to back, pulling up a stitch. All the way down to the tip. I got so engrossed in doing that purl stitch that I didn't show you how to pull the uh, cord all the way through so that you had your lifeline. And we are up to that point here. Here is our full, our yarn over from the previous row. So we'll go in for a full stitch, which looks like a knit stitch, folks. Then we'll yarn over and do the extended knit stitch, which is yarn over. I mean, pull up a loop, then yarn over and go through one loop. Yarn over again and then do our full stitch there. And then we will start our knit stitch all the way down the other side. Until we get to where we're ready to do our increase. Okay. And we're down to our last two stitches. Continue to do that knit stitch there. And then we'll do a full stitch here in between. And then we'll pick up the end like we normally do for our neat closure. Now, to get your lifeline through there, you're simply going to pull your cord through. 
Now at this point, you can undo your cord from your hook. So you have your lifeline there. And you know, normally I like to add my bunny beads. Um, I find that that helps me just keep from losing the cord. And you know, you, you don't have to add a bunny bead. I just do that for me. As your work gets larger, you will have to um, use more more of your cord than than you did before. Um, that is the only thing with this. All right, then our return pass is as normal, which is chain one, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. The only thing you want to make sure is when you're coming back with that, you're not pulling that yarn in under your cord. Okay? Because your cord does get in the way a little bit there. So just make sure you don't do that. If you are using yarn in place of um, crochet thread, you're more likely to try to pull it through the yarn that um, is your lifeline as well and you really want to avoid that because that makes a tangle when it comes time to pull it out it is possible but sometimes you've got to work where you've pulled that under in that stitch and finagle it a little bit okay and that is um, <clears throat> That is what you're going to do for these two rows, is you're simply going to do one row of purl stitch, one row of knit stitch. You just want to remember to do those increases on the ends as well as the beginning and then in your centers. Um, like I said, you always want to keep in mind that you're Even though it looks like you are doing a, um, you know, I'm telling you that you're doing a full stitch. It looks like you are doing a knit stitch in that full stitch, um, which is really kind of what a full stitch is, except it goes in between the bars normally instead of um, through a stitch. But, you know. That's just the way this one works. Because you are doing your full stitch in the yarn over and not into the bar. And um, let me get to the end here and I'll try to show you a little bit what I'm talking about there. Okay, when we get back to our point, here is our Tunisian knit extended knit stitch, and this is your yarn over from the um, previous row, and you're doing your full stitch in the yarn over. Now, if you were doing a yarn over in front of that, normally it would be like in between the two stitches. That is the only difference in this. Um, so I'm not sure why she just calls it that, but you know, that's what that's that's the way she wrote the pattern. So we're going to try to follow that as closely as we can. So I am going to work these up, and then uh, on Monday we'll see if it makes a big difference in the way that the shawl actually looks. And I can already tell it's going to make a big difference. We may still see some curling up like this, but it won't be all twisted and curled up right there in the center. 
now that I have corrected it. And I, again, I do apologize for that. But I hope that you in, did um, learn a little bit today, at least um, putting in lifelines with Tunisian knit or Tunisian crochet. Um, it is possible to do that and to use those lifelines. And I think I will do that um, in between each section anyway from now on. Um, so, yeah. All right. That's it. I'll see you again next week where we will do section three. All right, folks. Have a great week. Bye.